Oh, friends, it's a rainy day here, but you know what? We've got flowers to paint. I'm going to start today with Academy watercolor paper, this East and Rory handmade watercolor set, and the Art for Joy's Sake brush collection. This watercolor set is a limited palette, but it's so beautiful, so creamy and luscious. I can't get enough. All right, specifically the Forget Rules brush, which is the half inch dagger, and the Remember Joy, which is the liner. All right, let's get into it. I'm using this soft pink, the curved edge facing down, and I'm creating a slight curve, a drag, and a lift, and then I'm adding a little extra bounce of a stroke right next to the first one, and radiating around a imaginary center, I'm repeating that technique. So drag, lift, a little bit of wiggle, a little bounce, a little tap, and you've got petals made up by two or three strokes. And just remember to keep changing the angle of your brush to radiate around that imaginary center. Now, don't worry, we'll be filling that in later. You can make some of your petals curving upwards to give them a little bit of a more natural feel. Zoom in here a little bit so you can see. And we're going to add a little bit of a dark red, pink. Use what you have, friends, and just tap with the tip of this dagger brush. You can drag a little bit. Just tap and release quickly for more of a, uh, a misshapen dot, if you will, and let some of that color bleed into the soft pink. And that's where things get super interesting. Let's go ahead with a leaf curved edge down, press down, drag. As long as you drag, that'll be as long as your leaf is, and lift. You can add a little twist at the end. Press, drag, and lift on the other side. Basically, a mirrored stroke for a wider leaf. Press, drag, and lift. Now, you can use a different color for each side of the leaf, and then let them blend together for some really cool effects. Totally up to you. I don't want you to worry too much about how much water you have on your brush. Just as long as you're getting the intensity of color that you're after, then don't worry too much about 50% water, 50% pigment, whatever the case may be. Now see what I did there. I loaded two different colors for each stroke of the petal and it creates just a lovely effect. You can go ahead with a really light touch and the tip of your dagger brush at this point and add a little bit of a suggestion of a stem. So this is what I call a transitional flower. And if you can master this flower and feel comfortable with this type of flower, you can paint pretty much anything. So if you're a beginner, this flower is your beginning. This flower is your springboard. So let's get into it. We're gonna create a whole pattern with what we've just learned. And it's all about these transitional pink daisies. I call them daisies, but honestly, friends, these flowers could be anything. That's why I say transitional. So you're going to use the curved side down. You're going to press, wiggle, and drag just a little bit as long as you want your petals to be. You can even twist like I did there to create a wider petal. And notice how I'm changing the angle of my brush. And that's really changing the angle of my hand. And I'm just going to continue on. I don't want each petal to look the same or be built the same. Some petals are one stroke. Some are one wider stroke and one thinner. Some are like one, two, three, wiggle. I mean, it's all about variety here. I'm also thinking about composition. I get so many questions about composition from this community and it's something I'm preparing to talk a lot more about. But just a fast and loose idea of how I think, I often think in odd numbers. So three flowers, five flowers, seven flowers, nine flowers. Often odd numbers visually on the page is just way more intriguing and exciting than even numbers. The other thing I do is think about some flowers being larger and some being smaller. And notice the differences in the size of these flowers isn't very noticeable, but it's just enough. Now, while these pink petals are just still a little bit damp, some are actually kind of wet, I'm adding in this beautiful wine color to the center, just a dab or two, not too much pressure, because I want things to start to blend and bleed and do their watercolor thing, but I don't want it to be out of control. 
Here we go with a press, drag, and lift two times to get some leaves. Press, drag, and lift. And the drag on those last two leaves wasn't very long because I wanted a squat little leaf. Notice I created this particular leaf with two colors. I love that. So I started with kind of a buff. It's almost like an ivory watercolor, gorgeous. And then I'm transitioning into this beautiful kind of muddy sage green color. Notice I'm still using this half inch dagger. I haven't changed my brush. And I'm just filling in here and there with leaves, keeping in mind to vary the width, the length, the shape in general. And notice how when I create that press, drag, and lift technique, and I mirror that brush stroke on the other side to make a wider petal, sometimes I like to leave a little bit of white in between to visually create a vein in my leaf right away. Look at how I'm using the curved edge facing down towards the paper to create little suggestions of stems. Just a little touch with the curved edge of the brush, the dagger, just a dab and lift, almost holding that brush perpendicular, and you get that beautiful suggestion of a branch. I'm not overthinking things as I'm flowing through this composition. I am painting small. This is a five by seven. I'm a big, big fan of painting small when I don't have a lot of time because that eliminates the pressure of having to quote, finish this big, scary painting all in one sitting. I get asked a lot, Christy, how much water should I have on my brush? And the thing is, it definitely depends on the look that you want. I was going for a little bit more of a controlled feel in this painting. I knew that I just wanted to enjoy the richness of these colors. I was gonna be a little bit more heavy handed. These handmade watercolors are also a little more opaque. So I knew I wanted to see that, that richness and, and not to see as much sheerness through to the paper. So I didn't use as much water. I would say if you wanted to put it into a ratio for those of us who are a little bit more on the left side of the brain, uh, it's about 60% pigment on my brush right now and 40% water. So you're getting those damp surfaces. All those petals will stay damp, but I'm not creating puddles of water on the page today. And friends, trust me, I often create puddles. So this is a little different for me. So, but notice when that green leaf brush stroke touches the pink that's still damp, you're getting the blending, you're getting the explosion on the page, but it's much more subtle, which I think is lovely to have a little bit of that control. I'm bringing in the Remember Joy brush. This is our liner brush, friends, and I'm going in. Use whatever darkness you have lurking in your mixing palette. Go into the crevices of your palette, re-wet them, and just grab what you have. Um, this is kind of a little bit of that wine-colored acry uh, acrylic. Yeah, this is a little bit of that wine um, pigment I used at the center of the flowers mixed with some of the green and I have a little bit of like a charcoal in this palette and I just had that sitting in the corner of my mixing palette and I re-wet it and I'm using that now. The thing with the liner brush, I say it a lot, uh, you want to make sure now it's about 50-50% um, pigment and water. If you feel like there's a little bit too much drag on that liner brush when you're trying to make those graceful lines, just dip the tip of the brush into a little bit of water and you should have a really nice flow at that point. I'm going into the flowers with some linear detail as well and I'm going right in bold with that wine color. You could go in softer. You could take a pink and mix it just a little bit of a wine or a raspberry or an alizarin crimson, you do you. I wanted the boldness, so I'm going bold. Notice what I'm doing here. I am going purposely outside the lines that my initial petal strokes made. I'm a big fan. This is your time to refine the shape of these flowers. This is your time to enliven the shape of these flowers, make them fuller, make them more graceful, but don't necessarily feel like you have to stay within the shape of your initial brush strokes. Now, by all means, if you are in love with the shape of your initial brush strokes as they are, 
go ahead and follow them and stay inside the lines. But just know you do not have to. Friends, I just want to take a moment here to thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Um, you just have to know how much I appreciate this community. It's fantastic. If you are new here, though, I would love if you give us a like, subscribe so you don't miss anything. I publish twice a week and I don't want you to miss a thing. It's all about watercolor here. It's about finding freedom of expression and finding freedom of technique. I want you to break through from the rules. I'm going to teach you the rules, but I'm also going to teach you how to break them. So give us a like, make sure you subscribe and let's keep painting. Gosh, I feel super chill today. Like I said, it's raining outside. I am cuddled up at my desk with a blanket and a warm sweater, and my voice seems to be following suit with my cozy vibe. Friends, I'm still using that liner brush. Remember, you could press a little harder on that liner brush, and it's going to react really quickly like it did in that leaf here. So you can get bold, press down, make thicker lines, it's such an incredibly versatile brush. Now, if you are using, let's just say a round brush, maybe you have a size eight or a nine, as long as it comes to a lovely point with a little bit of finesse and a little bit of practice, you're going to be able to make some of these thin lines as well with that same brush. So no worries there. Now I'm going in and I wanna make some vines connecting my flowers and connecting my leaves. So going in with that dark muddy color that I found in the deep dark crevices of my palette. And I am literally sketching with this brush. Now friends, this could take a little bit of practice. If you want a little bit of a walkthrough how to practice making brush strokes and different lines with your brushes, I'd suggest watching this video. This is a good one. It's gonna give you an idea of how to create some muscle memory in your hand, which means your hand becomes really, really good and really strong when it comes to making marks with your brushes. So go ahead and check that one out. I love sketching with my liner brushes. It's very freeing. Again, just keep them, an eye on how much water and pigment is on that brush. If you're feeling like it's getting dry, it's dragging, you're not getting that really nice flow, just a reminder to dip right into some water. It's easy to feel like you wanna overdo something like this, especially if you're really liking the look of something. It's so easy to overdo it, so just keep that in mind. Oh, one of my favorite parts, I am adding with that charcoal watercolor from this Easton Rory set, I am adding these gorgeous dark centers because guess what? The centers of my flowers are still a little bit damp, so I'm getting a nice, soft blend by adding that, it's just lovely. All right, I lied, I lied. I'm also using my number two round brush from the Art for Joy Say collection. I'm bringing it in just to dab and lift, dab and lift with that charcoal. And I'm dabbing and lifting until the paint almost runs out to create a little texture on those some of those strokes. And it's creating just a lovely, lovely filler flower effect. Just so pretty. Now, you could have done this with your liner brush. You just would have had to, to work a little harder, to be quite honest. You would have to almost sketch these little shapes, which is why I brought out the number two brush. You could have also done these with your half inch dagger, but it would have been a little bit more difficult to create the size, the scale, the smaller size of those little splotches. So back at it with the liner brush just connecting some dots and and continuing to add some detail to those filler filler flower dots whatever you want to call them that I just added so pretty we're going to wrap this up today friends uh, I want to show you a technique that I use for backgrounds as well I get asked about how do you paint your backgrounds now I don't always paint backgrounds but when I do there's a particular technique that I love the most. And so I do wanna share that with you today. Ha, <laughs> surprise, surprise, out comes the cat's tongue. Look at that, some of that wine, raspberry, alizarin, crimson, use what you have on the brush. Uh, just dab around the center of your flower to create a little bit of contrast and definition at the center of those flowers. 
All right, it's time for that background, friends. Make sure you give this piece time to dry. Use a hair dryer, let it sit overnight, but let's get into it. Basically, I'm going into this background with the cat's tongue because I love the control I get. I'm using a different palette right now. This is my Holbein palette. It has some gorgeous pre-mixed aquas and purples and pinks. And notice what I'm doing here. I'm blocking in the background. I started with an aqua, quickly went into a purple, and that could easily be just a little bit of pink on your brush, pulling in some of that aqua, and you're working around and around and around these small nooks and crannies of white background space. Look at that, changed my color again to a peach. I just felt like this neutral painting, you know, neutral as a soft pink and greens are, to me that's neutral, uh, felt like it needed a little bit of life, a little bit of oomph. Now, a little tip for you, if you really love your painting before the background, which I did mine, scan it. Scan it in or take a photo or something to document the work that you did before you started the background. And then you can, of course, photograph or scan the piece after the background is done. Anyway, moving on. Friends, if you're having a good time, I would love you to give this video a boop. That just means give it a like. Thanks so much, friends. All right. Notice I am switching up my colors here in the background as I go. And I am keeping what I call a wet edge. This is the key to making sure you don't get the weirdo areas that just dry. Now notice I have a little bit of an area there that did dry. And so I re-wet it and now I'm adding in more color to blend, blend, blend. But the key in keeping a nice smooth look going in your background over the entire surface is to maintain a wet edge. And that just means that last edge that you touch if you need to take a break, if you need to grab another color, just make sure you keep dabbing that edge with clean water or with more paint to keep it wet until you're ready to continue on. So keeping that wet edge is key. Another thing that I do with this style of background is I often will keep a little bit of white margin between the background and the actual flowers or whatever it is I'm adding a background to. So you'll notice there's in many places in this particular composition, I leave just a little itty bitty white line between. I feel like it gives some visual rest. I feel like it creates a lot of interest. Now, I'm not always able or wanting to keep that margin every single place in the painting. It sometimes doesn't make sense to leave margin. And as you continue to try this background technique, you'll start to figure out where you want to leave margin and where you can leave it off. Awesome. This is so fun. I love this technique. It's incredibly cathartic. It is really important to choose the right brush. As I mentioned earlier, I am working small. It's a five by seven. So I definitely didn't want to go in with uh, too large of a brush. I definitely didn't want to go in with um, anything that didn't have a nice small point to it. The cat's tongue was the perfect choice. Thanks for painting with me today, friend. Do you love this background style we just finished up? Check out this video. Happy painting.